Hi, thanks for taking time out of your day to listen to this message from Calvary in Lake Havasu. We are in the Message to a Messed Up Church series, and today we're learning about the purpose of spiritual gifts from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Be sure to download the Life Notes and follow along by visiting our website at calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Now, here's Pastor Chad Garrison. I invite you to take a seat and uh, grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12 is our text. If you don't have a Bible with you, that's perfectly fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you if you're at our Sweetwater campus. If you're at our Parker campus, uh, then there's a table right in the middle of the back of the room. Just get up, go grab a Bible right now. Turn to page 1139, that's page 1139. You'll be able to follow along with us. And as always, if you're at any of our campuses and you don't have a Bible and you want one, take one. It is our gift to you. We want you to have God's Word, read God's Word. Uh, if you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, then uh, message us. We will get you a Bible because if we, we want everyone to have Scripture because if we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, uh, we are talking about the church at Corinth, which was a mess. That's why this is, series is called Message to a Messed Up Church. Uh, I mean, they were fighting about everything. They fought about money. They fought about sex. They fought about pride. They fought about freedom. They fought over women in church. They even fought about taking communion. Uh, but they didn't stop there. One of the issues that the Apostle Paul addresses is spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. And by the way, it's not just the church at Corinth that fought about spiritual gifts, but churches still fight about this issue today. So uh, how many of you, just a question, how many of you actually grew up attending any kind of church? That was part of your life. Okay, the majority of you grew up going to some kind of church. And uh, so if you, if you were raised in church, you probably were taught one of three, what I'm going to call unbiblical, unhealthy approaches to spiritual gifts. Okay, and, and that may sound a little judgmental. It may be a little judgmental, but it's because I don't agree with any of the camps that, that uh, I saw growing up. So one of the camps, the one I grew up in, was let's call them team cessationists, okay? Because these are all like teams, and they all compete against each other. So team cessationists were a bunch of people, a lot of Baptists are in this group, a lot of Reformed churches are in this group, and the cessationists believed and taught that the spiritual gifts ceased to exist when the apostles died, okay? And so they were like, okay, all that stuff. And now some of them, the more reasonable ones, said just the, just the wild gifts, stopped with the apostles. And the rest are still around, the ones that we like. And, uh, but, the, uh, but all the others, are, they're, they're gone. And then, you know, some of those cessationists were like, nope, all of them, gone. That was just for the apostles' age. And, uh, and I, that's what I grew up in. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. And uh, any, any cessa team cessationists out there, do you, do you raised that way? See, if some of you are like, I don't even know uh, what that word means. So, um, and then, and then the other team that, uh, you know, we were always playing against, it seems like, was team, let's call them team exaltation. And, and these are the churches that, you know, took the gifts of the Spirit and kind of made them the primary thing about their worship. Okay? It was all about the Holy Spirit. It was all about the gifts, especially the gifts of tongues and miracles and healings and things like that. Uh, if you grew up Pentecostal, then you probably grew up in that camp as well. Anyone want to confess uh, along with that? So... Like, everybody grew up in church. The rest of you better raise your hand on this next one. <laughs> By the way, um, team cessationists were always attacking team exaltation and vice versa. So team cessationists, they would say things. I mean, I know people who said things uh, that I completely disagreed with. was like, I don't think you're right. They would, like, accuse the, the team exaltation, you know, of, of, oh, those aren't even, that's not the Holy Spirit. That's demons. And I was like, that, that's judgy right there. And then uh, there were people on Team Exaltation who have also told me that I wasn't even going to heaven because I'm not a follower of Jesus because I didn't speak in tongues. And so they were pretty judgy towards each other, pretty mean towards each other, didn't like each other. And, and so I'm like, that was a good. And then the third team, let's call them Team Ignore, okay? <laughs> These are churches, they're not going to talk about the spiritual gifts, not going to mention the Holy Spirit. We're just going to stay. And by the way, you guys stay away from the other teams because they're crazy. Anybody team ignore? You guys, churches just didn't talk about it? Okay, it's like, a lot of you did. And the rest of you are like, I don't know what team I was on. It's, uh, that's okay if you don't. That's really good, probably. So uh, here's the thing. I, I don't agree with any of those teams. I don't agree with any of those approaches. At Calvary, we're, we're trying to be biblical. 
Look, we believe the Bible is the inspired and errant word of God that tells us what to believe and how to live. That's our, that's our first essential doctrine. And, and the Apostle Paul wrote two passages in Scripture, this one and in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, uh, that are all about gifts. And, and by the way, if Paul wrote them and he never said, hey, by the way, these are only for a little while, uh, so I think the cessationists build a case trying to defend turf that doesn't need defending. And, uh, and so, uh, and I can attack them, they're my family. So, uh, but uh, but I, I just think it's crazy. I grew up reading scripture and going, I don't see any place where they stopped. Uh, but I also want you to know that as we talk about this, this is not an issue worth dividing over, uh, which is one of the things I think breaks God's heart because, um, you know, we'll talk about that in a little bit, because he gave us these gifts to bless us and bless the church, and, and we fought over them. That's not what the purpose is. And, and here at Calvary, it's not one of our essential doctrines, and I'm gonna share what I think Scripture teaches about spiritual gifts, and if you agree with me, great, and if you don't agree with me, great, I don't care, because if, as long as we're united in love and on the mission of leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, we don't need to agree about every single thing. So, you know, this, this is a, a secondary issue. It's important, and I think it matters how we understand this to be biblical people. So uh, we're gonna dive in and talk about this. By the way, we're, we're talking about the purpose of spiritual gifts this week. This is such a big issue. We're talking about the practice of spiritual gifts next week. So uh, it, it's gonna be like a two-part message. So uh, anyway, let's start with just understanding God's purpose in gifting his children. We're talking about spiritual gifts. The first reason that God gave us spiritual gifts is to build his church. God gives us spiritual gifts to build his church. First Corinthians chapter 12, I wanna pick up at verse four, where the apostle Paul says, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. To each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit. In other words, each person is given a spiritual gift for the common good. So the very first thing I need to be really clear about is that spiritual gift conversation only applies to those who are followers of Jesus. If you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then guess what? you have been given a spiritual gift by the Holy Spirit of God for building up the church. See, the moment that you committed your life to Jesus, the moment you declared Jesus is Lord, God the Holy Spirit entered your life. Don't ask me how, I can't see it, but I know it happens because scripture says it does. And he takes up residence in your life and he claims you for Jesus, guaranteeing your salvation. He is the voice of conviction telling you when you're screwing up, okay? He tells you when you're, when you're wrong, okay? He's the one who convicts you of sin. He's the one who comforts you in your weakness and in your sorrow. He is the one who teaches you and it opens your eyes to the truth of God. And guess what? He is the one who gifts you with spiritual gifts. Gifts to be used for the common good. For us together, to benefit other people, to build up the church, to proclaim the gospel, the mission of the church. And Jesus loves the church. You guys do know that the church is equated with the bride of Jesus, right? If you don't know that, uh, it's in Ephesians 5, it's in Revelation 19, it's all great. So the church is equated with the bride of Christ. And I don't know about you guys, but I kind of am fond of my bride. Okay, and, and there's a lot of people who kind of go, you know, I like Jesus, I don't like the church, and I go, it's not gonna work so well. Now, you can love Jesus, but you're just not gonna be hanging out with him a whole lot. You're not gonna be close to Jesus unless you're connected to his, his bride. Does, does this make sense to, to anyone? I, I'm just, I just want you, you got friends who are like this, okay? So explain it to them this way. All right, if, if you tell me, Chad, I like you, but I don't like your wife, I will pray for you, I might visit you in the ICU. <laughs> I will preach your funeral. But we're not gonna be buds. We're not gonna hang out. It's not like we're gonna be like really close and chummy because you're always complaining about my wife. No, it's not gonna happen. What do you, how do you think Jesus feels if you come to Jesus? I love you and I wanna hang out with you, but I can't stand your wife. 
I'm just, I'm just saying, does, does, you think you're going to have this great relationship with Jesus? No, he loves his church, and he gave every single person who is a follower of Jesus spiritual gifts in order to build up his church, and I know it grieves him when we tear it down fighting about spiritual giftedness. So, you're a follower of Jesus, you have spiritual gifts, and some of you are asking, what's the difference between spiritual gifts and abilities and talents? Which is a great question. I get asked all the time. Um, and the reality is, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. You're like, well, okay, I've got the spiritual gift. How do I know if it's a talent or a gift? Well, okay, think about this. All of your talents and abilities were given to you by... God. Yeah, exactly. You were created with talents and abilities. Every person in this world was created with talents and abilities that were given to them by God. So God created you and he blessed you with talents. Spiritual gifts are different because they're only revealed when you trust Jesus and you start serving Jesus. Okay, so you trust Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit comes in. Not only do you have these talents and abilities, but now he's given you a spiritual gift. You go, how do I discover my spiritual gift? It is revealed when you're serving Jesus. Jesus. Before you met Jesus, you still had talents and abilities. And after Christ changed your life, now you have talents, abilities, and a gift. And that giftedness will show up as you use your life to further the kingdom of God. And uh, usually what happens, I think, is that your passions, the things you love to do, and your gifts intersect, and they show up when you're doing what you are called to do in God's kingdom for the purpose of the church, okay, for the mission of Christ. And that's why here at Calvary, we don't just want you to do something. Okay, now some of you aren't doing anything. You probably need to do something, but, um, <laughs> but we don't just want you to just do something. We want you to just go, hey, this is what I love to do. This is where I love to serve. This is what I, I really have a passion about. And then we believe that if we can help you to use your passion and your abilities to serve Jesus, your gifting's gonna be revealed. It's gonna come out. It's gonna, it's gonna pop. It's gonna show. And, and, uh, and that's why we want people to serve. Uh, now, I hope that makes sense. And if not, we'll develop it a little bit more next week when we talk about practice of gifts. Also, uh, just know this. As we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about gifting, we're talking about all these different backgrounds that we were raised with. Um, can I just tell you that the Holy Spirit always promotes Jesus. The Holy Spirit always promotes Jesus. Listen to the first three verses of 1 Corinthians 12. Paul says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Um, the gifts are given to build the church. The Holy Spirit lives in us to promote life change in Jesus Christ, in our lives and in the lives of other people. That's what he's doing. So let me be really clear. The Holy Spirit does not want to exalt you. It's not his purpose, not his goal, not his end result. He doesn't want to exalt you. He wants you to exalt Jesus. Okay? The Holy Spirit gives you gifts to serve and exalt Jesus. The Holy Spirit also does not want to exalt the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enables people to exalt Jesus. He's all about promoting Jesus. He's all about, so Jesus is the name that is above every name and the Holy Spirit enables people to confess and proclaim and exalt the name of Jesus. So God gave us gifts to build his church and the Holy Spirit is in your life as a follower of Jesus to build the church for the common good. And I want you to hear this, God determines our spiritual gifting. God determines our spiritual gifting. Pick up at verse seven again. We're gonna read on. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. 
All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. As he wills. God determines our spiritual gifting, and that means we do not get to choose. We don't get to decide how we would be gifted. We don't get to decide how God's going to, you know, give us talents and abilities. Right? Because, you know, if I could choose, I'd be able to, like, play guitar and sing like Jesse and play golf like Phil Mickelson. Okay? <laughs> I'm just telling you right now, that's, you know, I'd be like, okay, here, this is, and I know some of you are like, Tiger's better, and I don't care. Uh, but uh, look, God made us, God gave us abilities, God saved us, God gave us gifts to, to use for him. So here's a question that I, I want to ask you. Are you content with how God has gifted you? Are you content with how God has abled you and talented you and blessed you that way? Um, Contentment, by the way, means that you're serving God joyfully. So just think about that for a minute. Because when I ask that question, it's easy to go, yes, I'm content. Uh, Contentment means that you're serving God joyfully out of your gifting, out of your talent, out of your abilities. And uh, you're thanking God for how he made you and how he gifted you. And and I share that because I've, I've been in church my whole life and I have seen the practice of what I would call gift envy. There are people who are just, they have gift. I wish I could teach like Pastor Pete. Oh man, he's just so, so good. I wish I could, I I could bake like sister so-and-so. I wish I could, you know, decorate this, or I wish I could build a house like that. You know, look, there's a lot of things that all of us can't do. That's just reality. But the, the thing is, you have talents and abilities and gifts, and are you content with how God has made you? And you might be serving, but are you rejoicing in your gifts? Because if you're serving, but you're grumbling, then you're not content. And that means you have a complaint against God, who's the one who made you and the one who's gifted you. Um, and, and by the way, I'll just share this because, and I've shared it before, when I was young, when I first felt called in ministry, you know what kind of ministry I wanted to do? Worship. You know the problem with that? I didn't have talent. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it, it's reality. I worked really hard to be able to sing mediocri- with mediocrity. And, and, uh, and it was just like, no, you're not, you're, that's not how God made you. And I, and, and I had to be okay with that. I, I think it worked out okay. But uh, the... Uh, But at the same time, you know, I understand that gift envy. I wish I could sound like that. Now, some of you might be practicing gift envy. Others of you might be practicing gift avoidance, which means you're just not serving at all. Um, You guys do know that radical service is one of the core values here at Calvary. We believe that the love of Christ is best expressed through acts of kindness and service whether that's serving, you know, in a ministry or serving in the community or serving in uh, just as an individual in blessing people in Jesus' name. Uh, But we believe that everyone ought to be serving. God created us to serve. And if you're practicing gifted avoidance, then you can't truly uncover your spiritual giftedness unless you're actively serving the gift giver. Let me say that again. You'll never uncover your spiritual giftedness unless you're actually serving the gift giver. That's reality. And I've known a lot of Christians who are like, well, I just don't know my spiritual gift. And I go, that's because you're sitting on your rear end. (laughs) Get up and serve and you'll be amazed at what God reveals. So God determines our gifting and there are many gifts, one body and one God. Many gifts, one body and one God. Let's just continue at verse 12. I'm gonna read for a bit now. Paul says, for just as the body is one and has many members and all of the members uh, are of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. We were all made to drink of one spirit. You guys get that? We're one like your body is a whole body, but it has lots of different parts. Verse 14, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to that body, that would not make it any less part of the body. 
And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to that body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye can't say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. Which of our more presentable parts do not require, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Okay. Many gifts, one body, one God. Paul uses this picture of the body. And, and, and I want to play off that, but, but understand that the thing, all of us are part of Calvary. We're part of this body of Christ at Calvary, which means all of us are members of that, which means all of us are needed and part of this. Okay, so let me just share some statements about our reality that Paul just explained. A few verses uses all that imagery of the body and the different parts, and this is how I'm going to summarize that. First of all, we need each other. We need each other. Just like an eye needs an ear to hear and hands need feet to walk, uh, that's why we need to connect to a church. Not just be on the sidelines, just slip in and worship and leave, but actually get involved in serving, get involved in life groups where people get to know you and you have connection with them and they can help you grow and you can help them grow and, and we're in this together. Actually, you wanna see how the body looks, join a life group. It's really cool to see that lived out in a small group, the members of the body coming together uh, because we need each other. And, and, and we need each other because we have different gifts. We were created to be interdependent. And you value all the parts of your body. So we need to rely on each other. We are made, let me say it again, we are made to be interdependent. And sometimes that's hard for us to hear as American Christians because we grew up with the American kind of ideal about being fiercely independent. I'm my own man. No, you're not. You belong to Jesus. He bought you with a price. That price was the blood of Jesus. He shed his blood so that he could purchase you and make you part of his body. And so uh, our independence needs to be one of those things that we surrender to God. Why? Because we were created to be interdependent as the family of God, as the body of Christ, using our gifts and abilities to build up the whole body to accomplish the mission of Jesus. So we need each other. And this is gonna sound really silly, but um, we complete each other. No, it's not meant to be romantic. But you can't look at the people around you and just go, you complete me, okay? Uh, see, we can only be partially effective when we're alone. If you lose your arm, what are you? <laughs> Some of you are like, or you're armless, yeah. If you lose your legs, what are you? Okay, if you, both your eyes go out. Okay, now you're starting to get a little more specific, okay? So, but the, the whole point is, if you're healthy, None of us chooses to lose a part of ourselves. And right now, some of you are thinking, I'd like to lose some weight right here. <laughs> We're not talking about fat and, and things like that, but if you're healthy, you're not gonna give up one of the members of your body. Uh, and the only way you'd ever do that is if it was diseased and it was gonna destroy the rest of your body. If it's hurting the rest of you, then you go, okay, cut it off, take it out, whatever, get rid of it. But, but none of us chooses to live life handicapped. None of us say, hey, I want to be disabled. I want to lose part of myself. I want to make life more challenging, more difficult. Look, if you're disabled, you can overcome, and I am so proud of people who do that all the time, who just go, hey, I'm gonna, it's way, it's way the hand I was dealt, and I'm gonna just deal with it, and, and that's great, but nobody chooses to lose a part of themselves when it's healthy. A fully 
functional body of Christ is beautiful and effective. It just is. By the way, it's one of the reasons I love being a pastor at Calvary. I get to watch the body of Christ at work all the time. It's awesome to serve on our team, to, to work together, seeing, you know, the strengths covering the weaknesses of each other. That's how God designed us to be so that, that we could be those things that we're not. And, and I know maybe you're thinking, I don't, I don't see how that works. Look, I'll just talk about the, you know, the, the, the lead pastors, the senior pastor team, if you will. You know, look, uh, how do can I put this? I already mentioned this. I don't sing. Jesse doesn't preach. Robert and Pete organize like nobody's business. They both build systems and stuff like that. And you know, I can't do that if you've ever been in my office and looked at my desk. So uh, we, we rely on each other's strengths and weaknesses to, to cover and to be a team and to work together in that fullness. And, and, and that's a picture of the body working together. So finally, as, as we talk about this, also see that we are in this together. We are in this together. Uh, verse 26, if one member suffers, all suffer. All of us suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Okay, so uh, let's play this. Uh, have you ever had, uh, anyone ever had a migraine? Okay. Um, when you have a migraine, does the rest of your body just go, hey, we're gonna do what we want while the head just checks out? No, you lay, the whole body lays down. You feel horrible, right? Does anybody feel good having a migraine? No, no their whole body is suffering. Hey, what about a toothache? Anybody ever had a toothache? Right, it's amazing. You have one tooth and it's driving you crazy. Makes your whole body sick, makes your whole body weak. You are suffering as the whole body. It's not like your foot's like, hey, we don't care. No, because when your body hurts, the whole body suffers for it. I happen to be really susceptible, and, and I curse my oldest daughter with this too, uh, to motion sickness. Okay, anybody with me on that? Okay, I, I, I'll never go on a seagoing vessel again that isn't like the size of a cruise ship. But, um, uh, and, and look, I, I fight that all the time. And if, and if my stomach gets upset, the rest of my body is not able to rejoice. Okay, it's just not. It, you know, there's, there's parts of me, the brain's like, hey, you want us to shut down? We'll just pass out. We'll all feel better that way. And, and you know, the, the, my, my flesh is sweating profusely. And, and my, it's all because my stomach is upset. The whole body is affected. We've got we to gotta see this. We're in this together. We're in this mission of Christ together. We're in the body of Christ together. We are serving together and we're either gonna do it in a healthy way where we're functioning for the kingdom of God or else we are gonna be sick and disabled. Okay, this is tragic, but it's true. 80% or more of the churches in the United States of America today are sick and disabled. They're not functioning as healthy bodies of Christ. And it's got to break God's heart. And it's, that's of every stripe, every kind, every variety. We are in this together. And that's why it's so important for us to get this and to serve Jesus together. As each one of us discovers and develops our giftedness, we build up the church and we lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Together we serve, together we celebrate, together we will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Um, so let me ask the closing difficult question. This is the one I want you to wrestle with all week long. Is your life a help or, or a handicap to the body of Christ? Is your life a help or a handicap to the body of Christ? Because God made you, he gave you talents and abilities. The Holy Spirit entered you, he gave you gifts to use for the building up of the church, for the common good. Are you using those gifts and abilities to bless people in Jesus' name? And if not, how do you want God to change your life today? Now, I wanna close with two challenges. And, and the challenges are one is for you and one is for us. The one for you, in your bulletin or in your life notes, uh, 
uh, it's in the life notes, in the bulletin, but if you're online on our uh, YouVersion, you know, events, the sermon notes, all that kind of stuff, it's on there too. We have a spiritual gift inventory that we've borrowed from a ministry that does spiritual giftedness. Uh, and, and we're gonna invite you to take it. it you know, it's free. It, it'll print out your results. You can see what they are. You can talk about it in life group. Hopefully you will talk about it in life group. Uh, you can discuss it with friends. Uh, you can come and you can email us questions, all that stuff. It's all good. Uh, but, but it's for you to do discovery. Now, I've already told you, if you're not serving at all, it's gonna be hard for you to figure that out and answer those questions. But if you're serving, it might be helpful. You might like it. Uh, by the way, I, uh, all those spiritual gift inventories, no matter who puts them out, they're not biblical, so don't, if you don't like it, don't worry about it. Uh, it I'm, just, I'm just telling you that. But it is, you know, it might be edifying for you, so I'm gonna encourage you to take that. Uh, that's for you. Now, for us, I already told you, radical service is part of what we do, and we wanna give you some opportunities to use your gifts if you're not already do, using your gifts. So when you leave, Pastor Rob already mentioned this, there's tables out there to sign up at. Serving opportunities, okay? Three different serving opportunities, special events, if you will. The first one is Halloween. We do Fright Night on Main Street. We've been doing this for over a decade, down on Main Street, got a Calvary candy land. We sugar up the kids. We bless people in Jesus' name. It is a fun night. We need people to serve. You can sign up for that. Secondly, we put on Night to Shine every other year. It is a prom for people with special needs. We're doing that February 9th. You can go out there and sign up. All different kinds of needs for that, uh, and they'll explain that, and, and you can check that out. Third one is in January, February, we're gonna be doing a sermon series and an emphasis for the church called Limitless. And Limitless is us talking about the fact that God has put a mission in front of us here at Calvary to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, and we're running out of space to do that. So we're gonna talk about what we're gonna to do to build, to provide that space, okay? And, and, and we're gonna be doing that for a month, uh, five weeks probably. Uh, we're gonna have a whole bunch of dinners. We're gonna need people to help serve. We're gonna need people to help set up. We're gonna need people to help take care of kids. We're gonna need people to help uh, decorate. We need people to help call people, all that stuff. So. Uh, you know, if you're like, hey, I want to serve, I want to start, you know, get my toe in the water, here's three events that you can do some very specific things for, and you can start serving God, and you can start saying, hey, I want God to use me to make a difference in this world. So the challenge is this. Ask yourself, you and God have a conversation. Am I a help or a handicap to the body of Christ? Number two, take a personal inventory, a spiritual gift test online. And number three, if you're not already serving, go out there and sign up for something and let God use you in some way to bless people in Jesus' name. Let's, uh, let's pray together. Father, it is amazing that you love us and that you gift us. It's amazing that you have filled us with your Holy Spirit, you have called us your servants, and you have equipped us to make a difference in this world. And God, we see you making a difference through the ministry of Calvary. We praise you for 70 people baptized last Sunday. We praise you for the one baptized tonight. Uh, amazing stories of life change, God, and, and it's because of you. And we get to be a part of that. So Father, as we look to the future, we ask that you would meet us as individuals and you would change our lives. You would teach us about our giftedness and God, we will use it to build your kingdom for the common good. That's our prayer. We make that commitment in Jesus' name. If you're unsure of your area of gifting, I encourage you to take the free self-guided spiritual gifts survey by clicking the link in the life notes or by simply visiting gifts.churchgrowth.org. Learning how God uniquely gifts you will provide you direction in ways that you serve him and his people more effectively. Romans chapter 12 verse 4 says, Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Please join us next week where we'll discuss the practice of spiritual gifts. Have a great week. Bye-bye.